Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. It is very cold outside, so I'm wearing these clothes. Doesn't mean I don't have heat in my home, I do. Actually, it's just an excuse so I can wear these clothes because I really like them, they're so comfortable. Anyway, in this episode, I you guys really like that top seven or whatever CSS tricks that you didn't know video. So I thought that I'm gonna do the same thing for JavaScript, so that's what we're gonna do. <coughs> I didn't eat food today. I have my fridge is empty, so I had to resort to the cards. It's getting tough out there. But if you're upping your skills and you get really good, you can make a lot of money and you don't have to eat cards anymore. So today's sponsor is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform and you can learn a bunch of awesome things to even grow your business. So they have courses on business growth, Maybe if you want to be a freelancer, uh, they're going to have some awesome courses there to get you started. And maybe you're interested in video content creation such as this. So you're going to have some awesome courses on video editing, color theory, and lighting. I have one big light here. It's blasting in my face, but it makes it all worth it. So check it out. They were nice enough to give me a, a coupon in the description. So if you click on that link, you're going to get two months for free month free trial nothing to lose awesome and the annual subscription is less than ten dollars a month so give it a shot see if you like it tell me how it is leave it in the comments and let's get into the episode hi my name is Jeff okay that's stupid okay let's get going do I look like a hipster enough for this video to be good okay let's get started first trick I want to show you is quite special this one is called the complicated ternary operator. So normally we would use if statements, we would say if, if jumbo, then we go humbo, right? Blah, blah, blah. And then else, something else happens, okay? So depending if this, this makes no sense. If this value is true, then this executes. If this value is false, then this executes right here. Okay, but we also know that there's a shorthand for this. So for example, I'll just create a variable here called const, uh, let's say age, and we're setting this equal to 18. We are young again, everybody. And all we have to do is to make that short, we can say something like age, like this. If age is, let's say, smaller than 15, and then you do this X, uh, question mark, and you're like, okay, so if it's smaller than 15, then what do I want to happen? I can say console log, you underage, under age homeboy all right and if it's not uh, smaller than 15 then here is your else statement so here you would say console log you big boy like that okay so if we run this if we open up the terminal that's an ssh nope let's say node app.js and run this let's see what we get we get you big homeboy, right? Because we're 18. So if we drop this to 13 and we hit save, then we're gonna get your underage homeboy. Perfect. The cool thing is that we can actually combine this and make it more complicated. So let's say we have age here and we are 13, okay? And what we can do is I can say if age is bigger than 50, like this, I can do a hey, console log, you're getting old, right? Else, if it's not, then I can say you are young. Okay, but here's the cool part. This is what we can do. We can say const age. If it's bigger than 50, I can add this symbol, right? I'm actually gonna bring it down to a new line like this because in here, I can add another one if I want. So I can say if, if age is bigger than, let's say, I don't know, let's do 70 like this. I can do another ternary operator and say console log, you are getting really old, like that. Else, and I can say here console log, uh, you are between 30 and 50, right? Like that, or 59, that's fine. And I can come down to a new line again and I can add another ternary operator in here and I can say console log, you are below 30. So hit save, let's see what's going on here. So I'm gonna check if age is bigger than 50 and if it is, 
then it's going to jump into this line. So the, everything I have highlighted in here. Okay, so if it's bigger than 50, it's going to go in here. If it's not bigger than 50, it's going to go to the end one, this one, you are below 30. So in here, we're going to check if it's above 70. And if it's above 70, then this is going to get locked else this is going to get locked. All right, so if we say 60, then this is going to get locked. So let's kind of take a look how this works. I'm going to say node app.js. So we are 30. Let's do something smaller to 25. You are below 30, as you can see. So it works perfectly. If I do something like uh, 60, hit save, run this again, you are between 30 and 59. All right, so this gets executed now. And if we are above, so if we change this to 80, hit save, run this again, you're getting really old. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's kind of just like chaining together uh, multiple things here. You check one value, then you can append another one. So everything in here runs and whichever uh, statement is correct here or gets approved, then that following console log gets executed. Okay, so that's one cool thing that you can try out. Personally, I don't like it. This looks this looks terrible. I don't know. It looks a bit way too complicated. I would just do an if else statement. Another cool thing that we can do is actually uh, what's like the simplest way you can go from a number to a string. So how can we convert a number to a string? Well, it's super simple. I can say const. Uh, let's say let's go with the age again and say 20. And let's say I want to make this a string. Well, all you need to do is take this age and you can add a plus and just an empty string. And once you do that, if we console log age, this actually gets converted to a string. Uh, you cannot tell like this. Hold on. Console log type of age. All right, that should tell us. Okay, so it's a string. As you can see down here, it's a string. And if we don't append this in here, then we're gonna get a number. So just append an empty string and you are good to go. Is you can create arrays and just fill it in with empty spaces if you want. So let me kind of show you const users. Let's say we have a user list here and I wanna create an array like this of, let's say five. All right, let's see what happens if we console log this. Users, all right, let me run this code. Run, okay. But what if I want to have just five empty strings? Well, what we can do is go here array and we can add a fill like this. And I can add whatever I want here. So if I add an empty pair of strings, this is gonna create an array with five empty strings. So that's super cool. You can also add values in here if you want. So I can say five and look at that. We have an array with five numbers. Okay, a little bit more useful method that we can try out is if we have an array and we wanna filter out basically the unique values from it. So I can say cons, maybe we have users here and we have add, uh, let me make an array add and then we have traversy daddy. Uh, we also have the unemployed tech lead and let's do like Anna and John Doe like that. All right. And what if I have somebody's calling me? I'm sorry. What if I have maybe two of these? So I want to have two of these. Okay. This works the same with numbers and everything else. So it's fine. Okay. Just the whole array here and you have multiple values that repeat themselves. Okay, so what you can do is actually you can say const unique, so you can create a new variable here like that. And you can say array dot from, and what, there's actually something called a new set here. And if we use this and we pass in the users, we are gonna get only the unique values from it. So if I console log unique, let's do unique, hit save and let's take a look and take a look the John Doe got taken out. So only the only one uh, got injected in here after this one didn't. So I can duplicate this as many times as I want. Make sure I add the commas in here. There we go. Run this again. Boom. Take a look. Only one. Another cool property that I haven't tried yet in my personal projects, but I cannot wait to try it is creating dynamic values and objects. Wow, that sounds so fancy. What you mean, homie? Uh, let me kind of show you. So maybe I want to have, let's say, const users, user, 
set this equal to and it's an object. Okay, so you might have a user with name of Ed and you have an email of deved at yahoo aol.com like that. And what if I want to have here a value that's dynamic? So you can add one up here. I can just create a variable const. I can call this dynamic and set this equal to maybe hobbies or something. And you can have this change to whatever you want. And to add it in here, all you have to do is add a pair of curly, not curly, square brackets, and you just add dynamic in here, like that. And in here, you can have like an array or whatever you want. Let's just say, what hobbies do I have? Stealing from shops. No, okay, let's not do that. Um, what other ha hobbies I have? All right, sleep. Okay, that's good. So if we console log this, as you can see, it's going to work perfectly. Uh, so we can say console log user, save, open this up. And as you can see, we have hobbies in here injected dynamically. So maybe you can mess around with this or change it uh, using JavaScript. And I can change this to maybe something else like blah, blah, blah. Boom, we changed it easily. Okay, so just remember that you can do uh, square brackets in here and the objects. Sometimes I also see that a lot of people struggle with like making the array shorter uh, and it's super simple. So if you have like a users and I'm just gonna add, I'm just gonna add some values in here like this, okay? And what if I just want the first three or four values? Well, you can just change the length of it. So I can say users.length and set this equal to something like three. So if we console log uh, users now, like that, as you can see, this only gets the first three values. So this is just a quick and simple way of getting those. If I want the first five, I just write five, and so on and so forth. What if I want to get the last values from here? We can also do that. I can just say console log, and you can use the slice. So I can say users.slice, so if I say minus one in here and we take a look at this, we're gonna get seven. If you want more, maybe you want the last three from here, you can say minus three. A lot of people struggle with figuring out if maybe they have an array, but at the end of the day, they wanted an object. So how can you convert that? So actually, let me bring this back in here. So we have const users, just as an example, and I can create a users object from this, like this. And all I do is just add the object symbol. I mean, to create an object like this, you use the curly braces, right? So all you do is use the spread operator, which is dot, 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 like this. And then you just say users, and that's it. You have converted the array to an object. No dot JS, I have to console out something on the screen. Uh, users object, like that, perfect. Let's run this. Let's see how it is, boom. There we go, we have an object. Ed, but what if I want to take the object and make it to array? No problem, we can do that. It's super easy. We can say const uh, user array like this and set this equal to, let me console log this out as well, console log user array. Perfect. So what we can do is we can say object, like with big O, object dot eh, keys. Why you do this? And we can pass in users. All right, so we're getting only the keys and making it an array. So add this and this. So if we run this again, there we, oh, my apologies. The keys are the other ones. Uh, these are the keys right here. If you wanna get the values, you can do values like that. Hit save and boom, boom, boom. There we go, we have everything there as well. So this is a super easy way you can do. You just use object.values or object.key and you can create your own erase from it. Okay, delete this. So here's my favorite one, which is the last one, is you can check the performance of your code. So what we can do is say let, let's say start at, and rather than using date, time, and all of those other crap, what we can do is say performance dot now. Ugh. Why do you do this? Okay, there we go. And here, down here, you would execute your crazy code that might take a long, long time. Okay, so let's say four, 
Um, how do you do a for loop let i, let i like that equal zero if i is smaller than a billion? No, let's just do something shorter like that. And then i plus plus, and then let's just console log i, and that's good. So you would run your crazy code down here, and then you would say let uh, end that. So your finish time. Here you say performance dot now again. And what you would do is you would say end that minus start that, and that's it. So we can say console log. Let's do some weird interpolation here using JavaScript craziness. They were on drugs when they did this. Start at, actually, we need to do end that, end at minus start at, like that. And I can write here took like thousand, uh, took milliseconds to execute. Okay, perfect. Uh, so let's run this. Let's take a look. Actually, it doesn't run in Node, so we would have to go to the browser here. And if we run this code, I get an error. Why? Why? Start at has already been defined. Okay, let me clear this up. Okay, there we go. So this gets run. Oh my god, I just did it. Oh, okay, there we go. So at the end, it says it took 978 milliseconds to execute. <laughs> All right, so one second and all. So there we go, hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited for next year because this year is almost done. So I'm probably gonna do one or two more talking videos, maybe one tutorial. Uh, but I'm really hyped for next year. You know why? Because I have been thinking of starting a tech channel. So we're gonna review physical tech, but in our own way, the way we do it here on DevEd. All right, we don't really care about quality or getting the information out there. We're just making it, I don't know what we're making here. It's depressing. So let me know if you, if you wanna see that, let me know. I wanna see DevEd tech channel right here on YouTube. Obviously it's gonna be a whole separate channel because this is more focused on development. I'm also excited to get more into game development. That's gonna be my ultimate goal to arrive to after we kind of finish up the whole series on web development. So after we get out a lot of videos on front-end web development and some back-end development and then releasing a few courses on React and Vue and blah, blah, blah. Then we're gonna jump into game development because that's like such a huge territory there to explore with like just 3D animation, 2D, and then you have the game engine, so Unity, Unreal, uh, music, and a lot more stuff. Okay, I'm getting really hot in these clothes. I should take it off. I should bring it back to the store because I haven't paid for them. So I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.